Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Mark Hunter, who is the sales hunter. Welcome to the program, Mark. Thank you for having me on today. Hey, so I know that Hunter is a play on your last name, but I also love, love, love how it plays into being a sales hunter because aren't we all hunting after sales? So I think we can probably go a long, long way on how to do it the right way and not coming off as aggressive and creepy and being too much of an aggressive hunter. So um, tell me a little bit on on how that kind of name came about and what your uh, um, impression and focus is. Well, I have my dad to thank for that. You know, when you're born with the last name of Hunter, you might as well run with it. So anyway, but no, it works out great. And and you know what? Sales Hunter doesn't have to be aggressive. Sales Hunter really is all about demonstrating leadership first with the customer. Mm. You know, if you don't create, if you don't create a relationship, if you don't create some foundation, uh, I don't care what you're selling. I I think the days of being the, the slippery, slimy salesperson, those are long gone. Uh, the internet has kind of called all those people out. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, have you ever read that book, Zmot, Z-M-O-T? No, I have not read it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that to my list. So. Well, it's a, it's a pretty quick read, and it's free. You can download it, just Google it, um, and it's written by an ex-Google employee, and it stands for Zero Moment of Truth. And it used to be you would go to the whatever, car dealership, and the moment right. of truth is when you buy the car, and now let's see if it works. Now the zero moment of truth is well before you engage with the brand because you're doing what you just said, which is researching and looking at options online. And people come pre-sold whatever you're selling so many times and many times you don't even get the call or the contact because of what they're seeing before they even engage with you. Oh, that's huge because I'll tell you what, the foundation is laid long before the sale is ever made. And I think a lot of salespeople really forget that Um, because really, you know, if you stop and think about it, who is going to talk to any salesperson without first Googling them? I mean, they're going to find out who who and what is, what is this person like? And I'll tell you what, that's why, you know, we, we, we scream and we yell that you can't go posting stuff like that on Facebook or social media mm-hmm. sites, but people do it and they, and they wonder why they're not successful in whatever their job is, whatever their job is, not just sales. And, you know, it doesn't even have to be that thing you post that doesn't make you look great. On the flip side, because that, what you said is exactly right, you don't want that. But on the flip side, what are we doing that is leaving those, um, like, like what uh, Eric Qualman calls, you know, like your digital footprint? What is those b- digital breadcrumbs out there that people will find when they Google us before they engage with us so that it positions us as that expert, authority, trusted advisor so that when you then connect on the phone or in person, they're listening more intently with what you have to say and not viewing you as that slimy sales person? What are they trying to close the sale with? You know, they want to listen because it's like, all right, they've got something good to say. Well, you just hit on something really strong there because it's amazing. The credibility and the competence that you've demonstrated is going to to determine how well that customer chooses to listen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, an an example I like to use is is a lot of people have problems closing sales. You know, Mm -hmm. that that seems to be the number one. That's really not the number one problem. The number one problem is that they can't prospect. Because what happens is they're sitting there dealing with prospects that really they should never have yeah. because they really failed to do the diligent research on the prospect and the prospect probably failed to do the diligent research on the customer. The, the example I like to use is I can't take a Walmart shopper and make them a Nordstrom customer. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Those are two completely different customers. Go and get the prospects that you're looking for that fit best with how you can help them. Um, and and it really, it, it starts with all of that online presence. It, it really does. And it's, and I really love, you know, you, you see the sales trainers and, and you hear this and it's like, Oh yeah, yeah, come on. Now. Meaning, It's not really about the close. The close should be and could be the easiest part of the transaction because it's not really closing. It's opening a relationship. So the the close is just making, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's once they've realized 
here's the problem I've got, here's the solution you provide, and yeah, what you said makes some sense, and then now there's some commonality. So I, I think, um, to, to, and I would like to ask your opinion, what is it, what is the misconception that salespeople have that the closing is the hardest part, and then they get all amped up for it, and then it's like the 101 closing objection scripts that I need to learn. No, it's just talk. <laughs> yeah. Be yourself. Oh, you, you are right. In fact, what, what I will argue is the best sales presentation ever made is the one never given. Now yeah. stop and think about that for a moment. What I'm saying is that you don't go in and present. You go in and have a discussion. Yeah. Hey, here's a key thing. What, one of the key things that I tell anybody to do in sales, your objective is to really get the customer very early on to say, great question, great mm-hmm. question. Now, what does that mean? That means they're having to stop and think. You see, the salesperson who really is the most successful is the one who is able to get the customer to see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. I mean, that, that's really what we do in sales is helping others see and achieve what they didn't think was possible. Now, to do that, we have to find out, we have to uncover what that is. And that means we've got to ask questions. And if we would ask more questions, ultimately getting the customer to say, great question, what does that do? That opens up a dialogue. That opens up a level of discussion. And see, there's no presentation ever made. The closing is, is really just a natural uh, next step. And, and really, closing is a misnomer because I really think that's almost the opening of the next phase of relationship. Yeah. Because really, a good transaction will always lead to another transaction, whether it be with that person or with somebody else. But it, it really becomes a, a relationship that's ongoing. Yeah, and it's kind of like uh, I like that comment you made that it's the sales presentation, the best one you never made, because in reality, um, you know the old saying, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Well, what if you showed up to that sales presentation? in person, you know, you've got a set appointment with someone and you showed up four minutes late and you were rumpled and hurried because you were four minutes late. And then you didn't brush your teeth that morning. So, I mean, there's all these little teeny little things that are telling factors that before you open your mouth and even shake your, that hand, and we could probably talk for hours on end on the cold, clammy, soft hands, you know, the, the benefit of a handshake, looking in the eye. How about all those things that happen before you open your mouth? That that pre-frames uh, the sales presentation per se. Oh, yes. In fact, really, the sale is made even before you arrive because not yeah. only has the customer done the research on you, but really it's your level of confidence and competence going into that sale. Mm. And this is what I find so fun. And this is whether it be if you're selling on the telephone, whether you're in person, whatever. It is amazing how I watch salespeople. They can have all the confidence in the world. I, you know, the salesperson who gets in their car and drives the customer. The windshield starts talking back to them, you know, mm. to get there. The salesperson who picks up the phone and calls somebody. One ringy dingy, oh, they feel good. Two ringy dingy, oh, no, they're not going to be there. Oh, three. Yep. And, you know, by the time they actually pick up, they're like, oh, they've totally talked. Them. It, this is what's funny because so many times that we – are predisposed, we, we as salespeople are predisposed to say this deal is not going to go through. This deal is not going to go through. So why am I going through these motions? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why are we even making the sales call then? In yeah. fact, that's another, in fact, there's another piece that drives me nuts. And, and that is there's all these studies out there. And, and I love statistical studies. Yeah. Saying, hey, you know, you know, 67% and 85% and all this sort of stuff. And, and all these numbers point to the fact of what you have to do. But here's what I find. Every sale is a one-to-one relationship. It's one-to-one. How many times have we watched that unranked team knock off that top 10 ranked team? Yep. How many times have we watched that, that, that fighter who, who has never lost or who has never lost and suddenly they lose to who is this kid? Right. You know, it's like any given Sunday. It's a, you got, it's always one-to-one. Yeah. You you never know until you show. You wipe the slate clean. The, you know, you can't rest on your laurels. You know, you go from hero to, I remember back in the, my mortgage banking days back in the 90s, my boss used to always say, you go from hero to zero on the first of the month because what did oh. you do last month? That's wonderful. Here's your commission. But now what's in front of you? Yeah. yeah. Success is not what you did yesterday. Success <laughs> is what you will do today. And yeah, but you know what? To me, I think that's what makes sales fun. Because yeah. I can have a bad day. I can have a bad week. I can have a bad month. I'm sure you, you unfortunately had some, some bad months. But you know what? You get, you, 
the first of the month, you get to start all over again. And it's great. Yeah. And it's great. And, and that's why you never know where success is going to come. I watch more salespeople uh, sit here and, 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 oh, oh, oh. Well, gee, I wonder why they have peaks and valleys because they allow themselves to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We create our own highs and lows. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting. What you just said there, I, I love I love listening for connections, right? And what you said right there, um, we create our highs and lows. And also what you said about speaking, to, the windshield speaking back. Um, I'm sure you've heard this and maybe you even teach it. Who knows? What uh, Shad Helmstetter's book, um, What You Say When You Talk to Yourself, um, really plays into that. You know, you can't say, well, this person is never going to buy from me. And you can't go, well, I don't deserve... So maybe you need to get that CD that you love and create a little playlist of your favorite songs that really just, when that song comes on, you just start smiling or you start bobbing your head. Get those songs and you play them before you, when you're driving up to that client. And then you're walking in going, this deal is done because I'm serving this client with the best service and the best you know, intention. And you're not trying to take advantage of them. But what can you do to get yourself in the right frame of mind, right? Well, it's funny, but you know, in every you know, in you know, in Major League Baseball, every player has their walk up music. Yeah. And I really think salespeople should have their walk up music too. Of just like just like what you described. Hey, he, here's all the the most difficult person we will ever negotiate against is ourselves. Yeah. That, that, that is without a doubt the most difficult. And and what we have to do is we have to shut out the negative voices. We really do. This is why I, I, I tell people so adamantly, if you're in your car, you turn off AM radio. You don't look at those various websites. You don't go down that path. You just don't go down. And because it, it is amazing. You become who you hang out with. You become the, the voices that you listen to. Here's, a, here's one really good trick that I love doing. In fact, I still do it. it right now, we're, we're doing this recording on a Friday afternoon. And one of the last things I'll do here today is I'm going to write down my biggest success of the week. I always write down at the end of the week, what's my biggest success of the week? <laughs> and, and, and I log it in any particular, um, I, I just have kept this list here for, for weeks, months, and years. And what it does is, is it allows me to end the week, regardless how good or bad it is, on a very high note. Yeah. And then there may be times when I'm, oh, but, and all I have to do is look at that list. Look at that. Wow. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And it's amazing how it literally motivates yourself. Because again, we got to come back to this piece. It is not what we sell. It is totally irrelevant what we sell. It is about our ability to help people. My whole goal, I, I get to work with many different companies, and I speak to thousands of salespeople and, and, and industries that, who are you people? I've never heard of you before. <laughs> and, and you know what's interesting? It's still, it's, it's people selling to people. And I don't care if that's B2B or B2C or B2G business to government. There's still, it's still people. It's still people. Yeah, so I heard someone focus, say just yesterday on a podcast, someone asked that question, well, is it different B2B or B2C? And, and he goes, are there people involved? There you go. That's it. There are still people involved. So my whole goal is that if I can help you, then doesn't that jazz me? Yeah. That's, yeah. That, I, to me, that's what makes sales fun. You know, really, what we sell is is really just the the vehicle, so to speak. We're driving, the, you know, the vehicle to get us in front of the customer. But it's really to help them, help them, uh, really achieve an outcome that they didn't think was possible. To me, that's yeah, and you know. Um, I, I think that there's a, an element of, um, I heard someone say recently, uh, you know, regarding, you know, commonality or commodity or, you know, how do you differentiate, differentiate yourself from your competitor? And one of the things that they brought up was you bring you to the table, right? So you might have widgets that you're selling, and it might be pretty similar to other widgets. There might be a little bell and whistle different, but guess what you're bringing to the table? You. During the process, after delivery, maybe there's follow-up. Somehow, some way, you're part of that process, and that brings this un, uh, uh, t this t intangible element to the sales process because once that sale is made, maybe you're telling them how to use it or do it a little bit differently than the competitor, or maybe you're following up or whatever the case might be. But I think that's an unseen um, differentiator that a lot of salespeople don't tap into. Yes, it is. Because, you know, price is not a marketing strategy. Mm. <laughs> you can't, it's just not. And, and what I'll, I'll argue is that commodities are sold at a loss. Yeah. Features, benefits are really sold at break even. 
outcomes are bought at a profit. Oh, nice. My like whole that. objective is to help you with an outcome. My whole objective. And you're right. I may be so. I, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was with a company. Uh, and believe me, this I, this is a commodity. It's rail cars of a commodity. Hmm. And the whole objective is that they do an incredible amount of business because every one of those individuals is charged with, how do we figure out what the outcome is that that customer is looking for? That's what you focus on. That's what, mm-hmm. that's that's why we sit there and ask questions. That's why we don't walk in with a presentation. That's why we don't go, hi, let me show you the 16. Oh, shut up. I, say, yeah, I've got this PowerPoint for you. That. Well, the yeah. PowerPoint might be totally different if you had listened to what I was going to say. Oh, without a doubt. Or the email. I mean, how, how many yeah. emails do we all get where, hi, I've got the perfect solution. It's like, wow. I, I, I had a situation the other day. I, I, I get companies that will call me and, you know, I do a lot of speaking and I do a lot of workshops and I, and I do some consulting. And I was working with a company and, and they, had, they had asked me for some consulting. And, and it was very interesting, but the expectation of what I had was totally different until I sat down with the senior management and began asking them questions. And it's funny, but the expectation of even what I had regarding, you know, what, what's, you know, what, what, how long is this project going to last and, and, and how much are they going to be willing to invest? Totally different when I, when I began talking to them because what they were looking for, totally different than what I was expecting. And wait a minute, I've been doing this for 30 years? Excuse <laughs> me. It's asking questions. The, cost, and, the customer will tell you if they have a level of confidence in you. And, and I, I think that to get a salesperson to, you know, question-based selling, you know, we've all heard that. And, okay, yeah, I, I ask questions, and they think that they did well just because they asked a question, but sometimes the answer to that question is not the real, you know, heart of the matter. So you got to get, oh, that's good. Now, what do you, what do you mean about X? And oh, that's a good point. Now, how impactful is that? And when you can finally get down a couple, three layers. Now, you don't want to do the old two-year-old. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? But if you can get a couple layers under, then it's going to really reveal itself, right? So yes. have, you seen, have you seen that with questioning um, where you take the first answer and think, Yahoo, I asked the question and now I'm going to be off to the races and you're kind of off in the wrong foot. Yeah. Many times that first answer they, they give you is a bold faced lie because they don't mm-hmm. trust you. There's no conference. I, I always go, it's that second, third, deeper mm-hmm. dive. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's the follow-up question. We, we have to be good at asking them. In fact, there, there's a simple phrase that I love to use. Short questions get you long answers. Long questions get you short answers. Oh, Sales cool. people are notorious for asking that big, long, you know, they, they blah, 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 and, and they go, oh, I better ask questions. So then they drop this question in, and then they keep talking, and then, they, and then the customer goes, huh? Because <laughs> they <laughs> couldn't figure out what you were asking. But the short question, why? How come? Could you give me another example? Tell me more. You know, those short questions are the ones that get you the great, long answers. Because and that, and that that's where you really begin to understand what the customer's looking for. And don't let yourself get into the common trap of ans- asking that short question. And the minute they start talking, your mind is going to your next point, and you start interrupting. And and now let them talk. You ask the question, right? I always say it. It's called a two second pause. Customer gets done talking. You wait for two seconds before you open your big fat mouth. And you know what's funny? Yeah. About 20% of the time, the customer will start talking again, and you go, bingo, <laughs> because they feel uncomfortable with silence. Right, exactly. And you know what's funny is that so many customers are trained that our salespeople don't listen. So when you go in and you demonstrate an ability to listen, wow, it's amazing yeah. how it changes the paradigm. And, you know, go back to that whole thing that you are different, even if you're selling a commodity. Right there, you're different. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was here uh, listening to an interview recently where someone said, uh, getting back again to research, you know, there's been some research done where people that talk a lot and quickly are not viewed as a trusted advisor or a knowledgeable expert. The people that ask specific questions, slowly pause, go deeper, those are the people that are, you know, intrinsically viewed as trusted. Mm-hmm. So it what do salespeople is, typically yeah. do? They talk fast. They talk, talk fast, fast and, and, and they, yeah, and, and and I think the reason they talk fast is because they're not comfortable with. Uh oh, they got to stay on script. They got to stay with what they got because they don't want the customer asking a question that they might not be able to answer. Or and on the I other no hand, uh, I I, th- I agree with that. But on the other hand, too, salespeople, I feel like 
are so bought into their product or service and excited about it, and they know that it's got great results, they just get excited and they just get passionate. But the problem is that excitement and passion comes off as, dude, just slow down a minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of a scene out of the movie uh, Tommy Boy, but we won't go down that path. I mean, that's, that's a great, <laughs> the that's guarantee a great in a box scene, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't or, go down that point. Or the, 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 the <laughs> truck lighting on fire on the desk. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a, that should be shown in a, you know, a classic sales uh, movie there. So I have a feeling that we could probably talk for about four and a half more hours, but um, let's go ahead and land the plane with... I'm sure you've written a book or two. I'm sure you've got some things that you, you know, would love to, you know, get help people understand your methodology. So what's the best way that people can engage with you, your brand and and learn more about your books? Yes, well, the new book is High Profit Prospecting because I talk all about profit. How do you maximize profit? So High Profit Prospecting is the new book and the website, very conveniently, thesaleshunter.com. You know, you got to use that name, thesaleshunter.com. And that's the awesome. way you can check out the blog, check out all the stuff but hey, the book High Profit Prospecting came out a few months back. It's doing absolutely terrific. I'm hearing from people every day as to how it's make, making an impact on them. So you can pick that up online, many, many bookstores, but uh, High Profit Prospecting. Love it. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you. Great selling. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.